Hello and welcome back to Biker Stuff. Today I'm going to explain how motorcycle brakes work. If you're new to my channel and want to see more, please subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications when there are more uploads from Biker Stuff. Hand grip and handlebar, the brake lever, the blue parts are the body of the master cylinder unit, the orange is the brake fluid, this purple part is the piston, this is the return spring, the yellow is the reservoir cap with the green diaphragm underneath it. Okay, that's the parts. Let's see how they work. In a relaxed state, when you are not touching the lever, the piston sits flat with a reservoir refill here, open, allowing the system to breathe and letting it remain fully topped up. The reservoir will drop for only two reasons. Firstly, as your pads get worn down and the brake pistons need to move further in, more fluid is needed and so the level will drop. And secondly, if you have a leak, but hopefully that will be obvious. There should never be a need to top up your reservoir if you replace your brake fluid when you fit new pads. And of course, if you have a leak, find it and fix it. If the observation window shows your fluid is at the lower mark, check your brake pads as this is telling you they need replacing. If you replaced your brake fluid halfway through your brake pads life, the markers on the window will mean nothing, so try to do both at the same time. When you squeeze the lever in, you slide the piston down the cylinder squeezing your fluid down the pipe and into the brake caliper. When you release your hand from the lever, pressure from the caliper will push the piston back into its resting place with the aid of the spring that lives in here. As your pads gradually wear down, more fluid is needed and the reservoir will begin to empty. This is a diaphragm. As you can see, it allows for movement. So as the fluid goes down, the diaphragm goes with it, preventing a vacuum, but still keeping the system sealed. If you get a tear in the diaphragm, you need to replace it. One last point on the master cylinder. These are oil seals that move with the piston. If they get worn, damaged or just old, they will need replacing as they won't be doing their job. And as we all know, our brakes are the most important part of the bike. So let's move on to the brake calipers. There are two different types of brake caliper. The one on the left is a floating caliper, which is not directly bolted to the bike, but via a mounting bracket. The one on the right is a fixed caliper and generally used on bigger, more powerful bikes. On both pictures, the parts are grey for the disc, the blue is the caliper body and the orange is the brake fluid with the green bleed nipple. The pistons are purple and the pads are yellow. As you can see on the floating caliper, it only has a piston or pistons on one side. As the pad reaches the disc, the caliper is then pulled across on its sliders and the other pad makes contact. Obviously, the gap isn't really this big. 
On the fixed caliper, there are pistons on both sides, usually two or three each side. And as the fluid enters the caliper, all the pistons on both sides move the pads onto the disc. As I mentioned when I described how the master cylinder worked, as the pads wear down, the pistons will move in closer to the disc and require more fluid to fill these chambers, which is when the reservoir level will drop. When the pads reach a point that they need replacing, the reservoir window will show your brake fluid level at the lower mark. Again, this is why you shouldn't top up your brake fluid in between brake pad changes. I hope this has helped you to understand what is happening when you squeeze your brake lever. Please message me or leave comments below. You know you like it, so tell your friends. I hope you like that. I have selected another video for you here, or you can look at an entire playlist. If you want to subscribe, click here.